Hi there, Dave Markham here for You You Away of Life. Thanks for continuing uh, with our commentaries. Uh, we've been talking about A Course in Miracles and uh, its relationship to Unitarian Universalism. Uh, the Unitarian tradition, which began back at the time of the Protestant Reformation, held that uh, there was no Trinity. Uh, there was only one God. And so over the years, uh, Unitarians have been persecuted by Christians for their failure to uh, uh, adopt the belief in the Trinity, or as one person at the Brockport sidewalk sale said to me, the triune God. Uh, we were out at a pamphlet table and a woman went by and uh, I started talking with her about Unitarian Universalism and she looked right at me and pointedly said, do you believe in the triune God? And uh, I said, no, we don't. And she said, well, turned and walked away. Now, as a Catholic, I was brought up with the idea of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Um, and that is a required belief in the Christian creed. And so, at the time of the Protestant Reformation, back in the late 1500s, the uh, Unitarians uh, were considered to be heretics and were persecuted by Christians, and uh, some of them were uh, executed and burned at the stake for their belief in one God. Jews, of course, uh, also are Unitarian. They, they believe in one God. Uh, my understanding is that Muslims also are Unitarian. They believe in Allah, one God. Jesus was a prophet, but they don't uh, attribute uh, a, a belief in the three people in one that the Trinity requires. Now, uh, my understanding of the Course in Miracles, as I'm reading, is that it also is Unitarian. So in chapter 1, section 2, there's an interesting paragraph. Um, the narrator of the Course is Jesus. When Helen Suchman was uh, transcribing the Course, uh, the voice she was hearing, uh, giving her the text, was uh, Jesus. And so it says, quote, no man cometh unto the Father but by me, unquote, does not mean that I am in any way separate or different from you except in time, and time does not really exist. The statement is more meaningful in terms of a vertical rather than a horizontal axis. You stand below me and I stand below God. In the process of rising up, I am higher because without me, the distance between God and man would be too great for you to encompass. I bridge the distance as an elder brother to you on the one hand and as a son of God on the other. My devotion to my brothers has placed me in charge of the sonship, which I render complete because I share it. This may appear to contradict the statement, quote, I and the Father are one, end quote. But there are two parts to the statement in recognition that the Father is greater. Jesus seems to be uh, saying in this section of the Course that um, the idea that he is God is not true. He's a conduit or a bridge, uh, a manifestation of the divine spark which exists in all of us, uh, perhaps closer to enlightenment or enlightened, where many of us strive to become enlightened. Uh, so his consciousness, his cosmic consciousness, is higher than most of us and if you read the New Testament and the things he taught and uh, the way he lived his life 
I think most people agree that um, he had an awareness and an enlightenment that uh, uh, was uh, extremely helpful, has been for 2,000 years to us, uh, and yet he is a brother to us. And so uh, Jesus seems to be saying in the Course um, exactly what the Unitarians have believed for um, five centuries. Now, uh, what's that have to do with the way we live our lives? I mean, what's the takeaway for today? The idea that uh, we all have a divine spark and Jesus, rather than to be worshipped of God, is actually a guide. He's a mentor, uh, a supportive brother. And so we can learn from him by looking up to him, so to speak, to see what he recommended in terms of uh, how we think and how we uh, treat other people. It should come as no surprise that <coughs> Jesus and the Course are, at least my understanding of Jesus and the Course, are very congruent. They're very aligned and integrated. Jesus says that the way to the kingdom, and remember he meant the kingdom is within you, which is what the Course says, the Course teaches, that the kingdom of God is in our mind, it's within us, it's not up in heaven or some external place, it's uh, the peace, the awareness that we create within ourselves. And Jesus says that the way to get to the kingdom is to love as I have loved. To love as I have loved. That's an amazing statement. That's exactly what the Course teaches. That's what a miracle is. A miracle is to extend that blessed divine spark within ourselves to other people and hopefully connect with them on that level so that we can be in love together. Jesus also says, <clears throat> love your enemies. And the Course teaches forgiveness. Not for the other person, but for one's own uh, well-being and peace of mind. To realize that the negative dysfunctional behaviors that other people engage in are nonsense. And we need to rise above it. And of course, Jesus, as he was being killed on the cross, being crucified, said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <clears throat> and that, of course, is what the Course is teaching. When other people attack us, and we're resentful, and we're angry, we're hurt, we're afraid, we need to get to that divine spot <clears throat> that kingdom within us and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they don't. Can you practice that today? I'm going to try to practice that today. You know, to recognize that the nonsense and the bullshit is just that. It's nonsense and bullshit. And to try to rise above it and treat people in a loving, kind way anyway. Thanks for listening. Till next time, it's Dave Markham. Bye.